Hello, welcome back to the Victoria's World Podcast. I'm Victoria. I'm a hand knit pattern designer living in the Pacific Northwest, I live on an island in Puget Sound. It is October 7th, it's a Friday, and I sat down to record, gathered all the things I wanted to share, and made myself a cup of tea. This cute little mug that I got from my mom for her birthday. And uh, I'm drinking Harney and Sons Herbal Hot Cinnamon Spice looks like this when you buy a big bag of 50 and uh, I drink it at least once a day during the fall and winter it's my favorite tea I think I've been drinking it for a couple years now so I haven't gotten tired of it yet and um, I buy like a hundred or more bags tea bags at once I think you can buy it loose leaf maybe as well but if you don't like cinnamon you already know it's not for you but if you do you should give it a try because it's really good I uh have a lot of things to share. Um, it's hard to know where to start. <laughs> I pulled out some stuff that I haven't talked about or shown on here for quite a while. I need to get a move on with writing this pattern. I did name it though. I think I finished it in the late spring it's got little teal tassels this is going to be called the bulky linus so linus shaped shawls i have talked about them on here a lot it's when you start in the corner and you knit diagonally increasing on one increasing on one side and decreasing on the other side so you get this biased shape where it just goes off in a in a direction and then what's cool about it is that when you're done and you like run out of yarn, you just cast off this other edge all at once. So I had two skeins of this Malabriga Rasta from years ago when I used to work at a pharmacy here that had Malabrigo and I would buy Rasta all the time. And these um, two lovely brown skeins were just like so, so beautiful. And I wanted, held onto them for a long time and wanted to make something special out of them. But it's hard when you have just two skeins of bulky to know what to do with it. So this is perfect. And I made it on, I'll have to look. It's funny, I gotta write up the pattern so I gotta look at my notes, but uh, I think it was a seven, size 17. Don't quote me on that. So it was rather open gauge and then I blocked it really heavily so it would open up so I could get it to be as big as possible and actually be a functional scarf. And it is, it's not quite cold enough to wear it yet it's still in the 60 degree Fahrenheit during the day. Um, probably even might hit 70 today with the sun. But this pattern I put together um, to stash bust, but also to offer a gift pattern to my newsletter subscribers. And came up with that plan in probably January or something and slowly worked on getting this had to happen. It's not a difficult pattern at all. It could possibly take someone like two or three settings with this bulky yarn. But I, uh, you know, had other things going on. Knew it wasn't going to be something I'd release right away. But anyway, now is the time. So I'm hoping to get it written and out to the newsletter folks maybe by mid-November at the latest. I also have that sock pattern. It's right here. Don't forget about this. Sock pattern that I would like to have out in November too, which I also haven't written. <laughs> so um, I have a lot to do, but I bring this pattern up to remind you about it and also to um, say that it has serves another purpose too, because I'm going to stop doing release day discounts uh, pretty much now. There will be no future pattern releases that have a discount on the first few days. I'm just going to stop doing that and I'll get into that later um, in the chatty bit at the end as to why I'm making that choice. But I do want to be generous and offer something to my subscribers for sticking with me. It's going to be specifically newsletter subscribers. I appreciate all of my YouTube subscribers as well, but it's hard to 
I don't have your contact information and it's hard to offer you like a product. So if you are subscribed to me here on YouTube and you would like this gift pattern, please subscribe to my newsletter and you can find that in the show description below. And if you're lost about how to find the show description, um, I think YouTube has changed their format. So it is a little bit busy and right underneath the video of where all the things are and how you make comments and stuff. When I watch YouTube videos, I'm like, why is it? There's so much stuff here, but just look for the, for the description. And then usually it says more. If you click on that, it'll drop down and they'll all be, there will be all my show notes and all the links to things I talk about and my patterns and my newsletter subscribing link. So this will be free. I will offer it on Ravelry also probably for $5 because it's not very complicated, um, but it's free for subscribers because like I said, you've been with me and I want to give you a gift in exchange for the fact that I'm not going to offer release day discounts anymore to anybody actually. So yeah, all I can do is, is create patterns for you to gift. Maybe not once a year, depends on if I have a good idea of something that would be really fun to share. Um, and they wouldn't be, they won't be my more complicated or more like fancy designs because those take a lot of hours and I need to get paid for that time. But sweet little things like this, which this is probably my most favorite construction ever. And I want everybody to be able to make them because if you've got those random skeins of yarn, you don't even have to have bulky weight. You can do it in any weight. You just knit until you run out of yarn. And then as long as you have enough to cast off then you're good and you can make a functional, beautiful piece, easy to gift, easy to knit. I added the tassels on because they um, complemented the brown very nicely. And this is one of my favorite Malabrigo colors. This is Rios, which is the superwash worsted. But I think I knit something else of these or just have bundles of, bundles of it left. I have like stashed, I'm trying to think about whether or not I just have little bits or if I have, well, larger skeins of this still, but that doesn't matter at all to you. <laughs> um, anyways, I wanted to do tassels. I feel like tassels anchor a shawl down. They just give it some weight and, um, yeah, it's just nice to have that and tuck them into your jacket. Yeah. Okay. The bulky Linus. I gotta get on that. I gotta do that this afternoon. <laughs> so much to do. Definitely this week, I have felt like I just did a lot of work and the last week and the week before. And so those like um, foggy day, foggy mornings are just so tempting to snuggle in and uh, just rest. And so I did a little bit more of that this week. And I wish I could do more, but I have a bunch of work to do. Okay. The other thing I pulled out, I will get to talking about what I'm wearing. Don't worry. <laughs> um, this is the Meridian Lines shawl that came out last September. So it's been a year now and um, it's a big square. Also looks really good on the wrong side. And this is with knit with Pearl Soho's linen quill, which is a wonderful yarn. Oh, so wonderful to knit with. So if you, you know, see fingering weight yarn and go, ugh, <laughs> so small. This yarn is so good. It's so fun. It's, it's just lovely to knit with. It has a lot of nice bounce to it. And, uh, if you fold it in half, you can wear it like a triangle shawl. And you can do the stripes going vertical or you can do the stripes going horizontal. You can do it the wrong side out. You can also just wear it draped over your shoulders. Pretty much every shawl I make gets a considerable amount of wear over just draped over my shoulders like this. I do really like that. Um, Sometimes when it's cold in here, I will just wear, well, instead of putting a sweater on, I'll just drape a shawl over my shoulders instead, depending on how cold it is. 
yeah. So I'm excited to wear this one too. Still yet not in need of a scarf when I go outside. A sweater and now in this last week, a hat is all that's required. Last week it was just a sweater. So it's getting incrementally colder. Anyways, you can find Meridian Lines on Ravelry and then my website at victoriaswell.com. It's also a really cost-effective shawl because it's fingering weight, so it's a little cheaper and you get a knit for longer. The bulky weights are the ones that cost a lot because they're heavier. So. Okay. Uh, so I knit a lot this week to like hit some knitting goals. I don't have anything that I'm working on for designs that I'm knitting. They're just all in other stages. Um, I finished obviously these socks last time. I am knitting another pair. I know in the last episode I had started a burgundy pair and I knit a gray stripe and I said I was going to pull it out and I did. I didn't make a lot of progress because I did other things but it's with the blue and it's looking really good. So I'm glad I changed my mind and decided that this would be a better choice. I did get a great name suggestion from my close buddy. She thought I asked for his name ideas because I just couldn't come up with even a nickname for these. They've just been the striped socks for um, a while. And she said, what about Knitter's Academia? Or Academia. And I really like that name. So I think that will probably be it unless something else even better comes along. But um, yeah. Knitter's Academia. And I'm definitely going to do a Christmas pair come November or early December when the pattern releases. It's looking like late to early December is probably when I'll be able to offer this for to, to you. Um, but I'm going to knit a brighter green with a bright red at that time. So you'll get to see it in many colors. And I do really love the pattern so I hope to knit, knit many more and last time I showed you all the colors I got from Knit Picks. This is Knit Picks Stroll Tweed so super soft. I really love knitting it. Um, I also knit on my second Waiting for Henry which has to be done tomorrow because that's one of the goals for the week. I don't know if I mentioned this before I think I did that when I plan my month out, I look at all of my whips and I look at my design work and I try to figure out what would support my design work and my personal knitting life. And that's how I decide what I need to work on. If whips have been lingering, languishing in my basket for too long, I will feel kind of burdened by it and not, you know, as interested in it. So I'll try to get that project done and out because I'm trying to foster excitement and enjoyment and so I don't want something to just get tucked away for a really long time. I'd rather pull it out and just get it done. Um, and I love finishing things as you know. So this week's goals were to finish this pair of socks and that's why when I say I have to finish by tomorrow because tomorrow Saturday is the end of the week in that goal sense. Anyways, did the heel flap, did the heel turn. Now I'm back to brown and I'm on the gusset in decreases. So I should be able to get to the foot by the end of today. And the foot looks like this. This is waiting for Henry. I'll link the pattern below. I made a rounded toe. I made so many changes. The pattern is great. It's really good, but I made so many changes It's because I just designed a sock pattern <laughs> right before I did this. And so I was like, well, I want to do what I did in my pattern and I want to do the toe that I did in my pattern. So her pattern has an afterthought heel and I made a heel flap and gusset because I wanted to practice it more and um, just make sure that my own intuitive sense may worked with what I had written in my pattern. So these fit nice and snug. 
haven't blocked it yet, so I'm looking forward to blocking it and finishing, and then I can wear them. I uh, often gift gift socks to my mom. So if I don't end up wearing them, uh, I can always give them to her. But mom, no guarantees. I might like it. She watches this. Okay. Something I finished last week that I was very excited about, one of my previous knitting goals was to get Amiga's off needles, which I did. Has a nice big fold crease there. Um, these pieces are the front and the back of a little tank that I started in August. It will be seamed side to side, and then this will be the neckline right here. And um, I will probably do it, it will go on my like details to-do list. So I consider our project done when I am done with parts. Um, but so like cross it off my whip list for sure. Uh, because I don't have a problem at some point going back and seeming. If I had a lot of things that were like this, I probably would feel a little, um, maybe like I shouldn't consider it done, but I know that I will, I won't forget. It's been sitting out on my desk and uh, I seemed the pockets of my it's over there, my great love cardigan. And I should grab that and show them to you. I don't think I, I must have recorded and then filmed a reel on Instagram of me sewing the pockets in. But anyways, that is very satisfying to have this project done. It did take a couple months and um, I got to seam it so that I can wear it underneath cardigans like the one I'm about to show you. So in a previous episode, I definitely tried this on. It's a, it's like a coat really. It's so big. Um, ta -da! so there's that front view. Looks good. <laughs> and then I just whip stitched it on the back. And I um, haven't sewn a lot of pockets down. This is maybe like my second or third. I did one for a cardigan a really long time ago. And one earlier this year. So while I was doing it, I was thinking, like, it doesn't need to be perfect. I've only done this a few times. No one's going to see this side. It doesn't really matter. Like, I did pin removable stitch markers on each side. I did not pin the bottom. I think that helped because as you whip stitch down, it's going to like, you know, shift the pocket. And I knew if I pinned it on the bottom, I would probably end up having to pull those out and readjusting once I got the sides down, if that makes sense. And um, the bottom, I don't know if you can see, is like very straight. So I was satisfied with that and it looks great. And I waited almost two months after I finished this cardigan because I'm pretty sure I finished this before July and then July went by and August went by almost, yeah, two and a half months um, before I seamed the pockets. But I knew I was gonna wear it because it was summer, so it was okay. But I think wearing Amigas underneath this would be just add an extra toasty for really cold days. Yeah, I'm very satisfied with this. I was considering, I have lots of let lopey, lots of let lopey, and several large quantities of colorways. So I thought I would make the shorter version, which is called Big Love, which doesn't have pockets and it comes to like the usual length of like hit top of hip or something. I thought I have several colors that I could knit another one. And I'm tempted to do that. There's a lot going on, so I don't have time. But um, I've got 
the colorway I used for the Fjord shawl. That's being testing right now. It's funny, I, I'm talking about things I didn't pull out. <laughs> Let me grab that too. This colorway. This is uh, Fjord. <laughs> the colorway's name. This is in testing right now. I have a handful of, of lovely volunteers working on this and i um, excited to start seeing pictures. So if you're testing, please send me photos. Big tassels, long, very long. Um, This should be out sometime beginning of November. Oh, <laughs> also important thing I forgot to write down that I wanted to say so much to tell you, um, is that this is going to be up for pre-order and I will try to plan by the time I put this video up, the pre-order should be up. So you can go to Ravelry now and you can find it under the Fjord shawl by Victoria Burgess. And, uh, the pre-order, if you don't know what a pre-order is, in terms of a knitting pattern, it's where you can purchase it now and you'll get a PDF that says, this is a pre-order. And the real PDF, the full PDF will be sent to you in a Ravelry update. So if you've ever bought a pattern on Ravelry, when the pattern adjusts something to it, they create a whole new PDF and they give it a different file name and they upload it to Ravelry and Ravelry sends it out to everybody. as like, this is an update. And there's usually a a little bit of text that tells you what's different about this version. And that's what I'm going to do for the Fjord shawl. And I'm doing that because I want to make the release of this pattern as successful as possible, which means when you see it, you can buy it now. You don't have to remember later, or I have to remind you, or you have to happen to see another podcast episode or another reel on Instagram or some other marketing thing I'm doing to remind you that it's there. So if you like it today, please buy it today. And that really supports me. It gives me lots of encouragement to keep promoting it. It means I can pay myself back for all the work I put in. <laughs> and uh, yeah. And you get it ahead of time, which means that it's like a little surprise. I don't have the exact release date because i am got to get all my testers to finish and their feedback and everything. And then if I need to change anything, so I'm not like going to commit to a certain day just yet but I will also have a lot of things to do this month so there's a part of me that's like don't <laughs> don't choose a date yet until you're really sure that you can deliver so yes you'll get the pattern delivered at the beginning of November in your inbox and yeah you'll be ex you can prepare the the pre-order document will tell you what the specs are, what the details are, so you can get your yarn ahead of time. Anyways, it just seems like a really good idea. I've never done it before. Lots of designers offer that and I'm excited to start trying it. So please purchase it today at Ravelry.com. Um, I will do a pre-order for my website. If you're not on Ravelry, um, I might not get it up at the same time for this video. I should, I'll try. But um, most people are buying my patterns on Ravelry. Just a, a handful of folks a year want to buy them for my website. Um, but yeah, I uh, hope you love it. I am wearing, I should have said this right away, but I forgot because I got carried away with all the stuff I forgot to write down to talk about. Um, I'm wearing the Yukon, which is a hat by Kaylee at the Nitty Pine. And Actually, I think it's Kylie. KY. Anyways, I've made six of these now, I think. I've given a couple away. I have, no, I've given three away. And I have a red one, a teal colored one, and a now goldy one. This is Durham Natura, which is a French yarn, Gelant. And um, I think I got this from Jess's shop at La Mercerie online. Looks like this, but much bigger, much bigger. 
and I was able to knit the whole hat in one skein and with plenty of leftover. Um, it's a lovely pattern. It was a really fun yarn. It's got some great bounce to it. Um, feels pretty durable too, but it's nice and soft. I haven't blocked it yet, so I do need to do that, but I just feel like this shape is really good for my face. I have a long face, so if I wear a very like tight fitted, like sleek hat, flat, very flat hat, um, it just doesn't flatter my face shape very well. So I like a little bit of poof to give me a little bit more, um, I don't know, maybe halo or something. And I like having a little bit of space. So yeah, I'm very happy. It took me two days. I could have made it in 24 hours, but I was working on other stuff. And I made it because I realized I didn't have enough hats to wear during winter that I really like in a variety of colors because I work outside at Farmer's Market every Sunday all year long and I need hats. And some farmer's markets, it's so cold. I need to wear two hats. Like I wear the <laughs> one underneath the other, which I started doing because I saw another vendor wearing two hats. I'm like, oh, that makes sense because my head is cold. So I need to knit more hats and I need to knit some like really warm, warm hats. So I might start using Lopi. I might knit some Poodle Lopi hats. Um, I could make one of these with that. It would be very It would bother my forehead because even this bothers my forehead. The only time it doesn't bother me 100% is when it's super cold outside. And then I'm, it's like totally not a problem. I think cold and itchiness are relative to each other. And a lot of times if I'm inside, I just push it up so that the hat is not sitting on my forehead. It's a little red because it's like, mm. but yes, I'm also wearing the Forager by Melody Hoffman, which is a raglan, oversized raglan, knit in Pudalopi and mohair that she designed a few years ago. Um, I think this is bottle green from Knitting for Olive. I'll try to tag, well, I won't try, I will um, list in the show notes the yarns I used. For this pattern, I used Pudalopi forest green, I think it is held double with a mohair strand for knitting for olive. And um, I pulled it out because I thought about it all of a sudden. I was like, oh yeah, the forager and it's a really good green. And sometimes I have so many sweaters, things get forgotten about a little bit unless I have someone else remind me. And so I pulled it out of a lot of sweaters I could have pulled out to wear this October. And I Sometimes I wear a different sweater every day. Sometimes I wear the same sweater for like a bunch of weeks in a row and I just leave it out. Most of my stuff is bagged up. So it's easier to just like wear something for a little while and then put it away and bring out something else. So yeah, I'm gonna take off my hat now and my, put my hair up because it's hot now that I've talked about it. Okay. I think the last thing I have to show you, I think it's the last thing, is my progress on First Light, which is the Pluto Lopi Held Double bottom-up sweater I've been knitting on for about a month now. I started on September 1st to knit the body. I tried it on, did some fun Instagram content about um, measuring a bottom-up sweater on yourself, trying it on. And I got some good feedback from a few people where they were like, yeah, I don't know why people say you can't try on bottom sweaters because you can. And um, forgive me if I talked about this last time. <laughs> but what I did was I went into the bathroom with like a close fitting tank top on. So there wouldn't be any like bold, bulky layer problems happening. And I put the sweater on my torso and I found where I think I would like the bottom of the sweater to hit, which was where my hip bones are in the front of my pelvis. Is that something, a spot I've noticed that is a, is a good hem line to hit, a good spot to hit with a hemline of a sweater. And um, you have to be careful because that anytime you move, the sweater moves. So I had to like roll up the, bit here under the armpit and stand up really tall and make sure everything is in the right place. 
like a bunch of times. So like, I just am really patient with myself, turn and see how maybe it looks on the side, maybe it looks on the back and make sure that it's still in that spot because it does move around a lot when you're measuring because you're moving. So it is easier to measure with a top down sweater because you can just plop it over. But I think you just do the, you consider, you consider things in the opposite way. So instead of considering the length of the sweater and the, where the hemline hits as the last thing when you do a, a top down, you do it first. And I also did do um, the math on my color work swatch for the yoke to see how many rows per inch I was getting. And then I went into the sweater itself and I counted in the directions how many rows I was required to knit for my size for the yoke. So I could get an idea of like, well, how many inches is that gonna be? And does that seem reasonable for my body? And I think when I did that calculation, it was gonna be 12 inches long, 12 inches deep in the front and 13 inches deep in the back because there are short rows, so they're different. And that was like, that's in a good range. It's gonna be a little bit oversized, which this sweater is. So I am um, hoping to be not precise, but in the ballpark of something that's gonna fit. And um, I then combined it together. <laughs> And it was really weird. I've done this before. My very first sweater was a bottom up in the round. So it's not like I've never seen it, never seen the magic happen. And I have done um, it recently, maybe like a few years ago. So it's just been a little while since I've seen it happen. And you're like reading the direction. I'm reading the directions and thinking, I don't understand how this is gonna get, get pulled together. Um, but I knew this would be the case and I was still unsure. I just knew that once I had the parts in my hand and I was literally at the point when I needed to combine them, that things would make more sense because that's just how I have experienced things is that if I am actually at the point where I'm needing to do this confusing thing I'm reading, there's it just, you just can look at it and be like, well, does that, would that work? Or it was like, I had the needle in my right hand and I had the needle in my left hand that was on the sleeve. And I was like, well, I'm just gonna knit them together. And then it worked and it was, it made sense all of a sudden. So there's a hold, the underarm and the underside of the sleeve will need to be grafted together. That's part of it. And I have to finish the short rows and there's nothing left to do but the color work. So yeah. It's very fun. That's the thing about doing something you don't normally do is it's really invigorating and exciting because I was like, oh, it's working, it's working. And it's going to be kind of like right here. Yeah. And if the sweater is longer than when I put it on my body and the sleeves are longer, then I'm okay with that. I'm not okay with it being short, shorter than I need. Um, but I think it's going to be something in the ballpark of what I was hoping for. And it's very woolly. It's gonna be, this is feeling a little bit thinner, this one, but this is unblocked and unworn and this is a few years old and uh, the gauges are looking relatively similar too. So anyways, I'm a little nervous to start the color work. The, the, <laughs> the color work swatch was a, a bit of a chore for me because of the way that I did it and the attitude I had at the time. Uh, so I just need to like, just suck it up and, and start, you know, and, and doing a color work yoke with the full quantity of stitches is always a chore a little bit. And I'm hoping that it'll be a little bit more fun now that I'm actually working on the sweater and stuff. But the goal is next week to be done. And see how that goes. The contrast color is this beautiful blue, which I believe is called Our Blues or Blues Blue. I forget. I will link below. As I've shown before on here, they go really nicely together. I think that's all for things to show you. I did want to tell you a little bit more about the No More Release Date discount thing. Um, I came to that conclusion kind of after having a conversation with a few of my fellow designers who I'm in a group with 
And it reminded me that I've had this conversation with other designers in many for, for many years now. And none of us really understand why we should, it's not to say that we don't understand. None of us like offering release day discounts because it undercuts our sales in the first few days of a release, which is usually when we sell the most patterns. And it does serve a purpose because it, it makes you rush out and buy it because it's only going to be discounted for a couple days, but it's like a dollar, a dollar 50 maybe. And so it's not a lot. So it's this weird sort of like, so it makes it makes a big difference for us. I don't think as a consumer myself of buying patterns, it would really make that much difference to me. Um, it could be hard on those that have lower budgets, but it's the least expensive part of a project. It's cheaper than needles. It's cheaper than yarn. And unless you're buying like really, really economy yarns, which is totally cool. Patterns are the least expensive part. So if we undercut our first few days of sales, then we're really, de really devaluing our designs and it feels that way internally for me. And it doesn't really make sense. And I want to get out from doing that. I want to offer a birthday sale every year and I want to offer sales for like when Christmas is coming and I want to give a discount on my patterns that people might knit for gifts for Christmas. That makes sense to me, but to, to produce a new pattern and say, Hey, I've got a new product and I'm going to reduce its value. <laughs> doesn't make any sense. And there are very few places I can think of where people do that for new products. I can think of like when someone starts a program, a membership program, there might be early bird discount. Or if people want to sign up, if there's some sort of event happening and the company is trying to produce, trying, trying to encourage people to sign up early, they might offer a discount. That's up to them, you know, uh, if they want to do that. But I don't think we should be doing the same kind of thing for a product that is always available and shouldn't be on sale right away as a new thing. So I wrote a really nice explanation for my newsletter subscribers, which I'll send out later today or tomorrow. Um, if you want to read a little bit more about it and, uh, I hope that that's, it made me nervous to write it and like nervous to talk about it. It just shows you how like afraid designers are to do anything different or go outside of the norm because, you know, people might not buy as many patterns the first day if they're like, oh, she's not offering a discount. And, and um, I think I won't talk about it once I get through the Fjord Chal. I'm talking about it now because it's, it's, I'm changing things, but I think I will just go on and release things and see like, will anybody notice that there's not a discount or... Um, yeah, it's just a weird culture. And I don't know how, how we started, uh, then in this, on Ravelry and in the knitting online industry of devaluing patterns in general, and certainly offering discounts to an already very, very low priced product. It's very strange. And I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how we, how we got here, but I know that we can change it. And we can do it one designer at a time, one pattern at a time and say, no, we're not going to do that anymore. And we're going to say my pattern's worth $7. My pattern's worth $6. It's worth the full price because of all the time that it takes for me to get it out. Also, every transaction I pay a Ravelry fee or a website fee and I pay a PayPal fee often on top, often on top of that. And then there's taxes and then there's all the expense and all the overhead, all the softwares I have in place that I pay monthly subscriptions on. It's just really big. So I started off my newsletter post with like, I don't make any money. And it's very true. And it surprises me sometimes when I think about, yeah, I, I'm not making anything. Um, I am selling patterns, but it costs so much to produce. I'm not making anything. And I probably won't make anything for a long time um, unless I have such a, 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 a huge dramatic... Uh, increase of sales. I won't make anything. So my goal is just to break even. It's just to pay myself back for all the supplies I use. That would be the first step. And then pay myself back for my time would be the second step. That would be making money. And that's not happened yet. So I hope that that makes sense to you. And that you can give up that dollar, dollar fifty of savings 
to help me do this in the future so I can keep bringing d delightful ideas to knitters and share my experience and tips, all that stuff. Keep recording on here and sharing with you guys. So anyways, comment below if you have thoughts and sign up for my newsletter through the link in the show notes below so you can get my newsletter about it. And there's also going to be a link to the pre-order for the Fjord shawl, which I would really appreciate if you do like it and you do want to buy it, that you buy it right away so that we don't forget. And I think that's it. Yeah. I'm going to edit this video. I'm going to work on the Linus pattern. I'm going to write that newsletter and then maybe get out into the sun. The leaves are beautifully turning. I have like six giant maples, more, more than six, but I have like six right here that, um, kind of make a little like parenthesis shape around this window and they are all turning and I've been watching them every day as the leaves start to get spots, turn gold, turn brown, and then fall off. There is, um, I forget the name of the seed on the maple. It's like a scion or a scion. I can't remember, but it's the one with all the little, um, splinters <laughs> and then it has a little wing and those, they do the little spiral and they haven't started falling yet, which is interesting because they grow in clumps on the branches and they have been clumped and waiting for at least since August. Because I remember looking up at the maples and going, there's this brown thing up there and thinking the leaves were turning already, but they weren't turning. It's just like a wad of seeds that are ready to go. And when they fall back here, it's like they're, it's, I can't even film it as I don't have a high enough, um, a good enough camera to capture like the like twirly that's just everywhere. And I'm, I'm going to be somewhere else for uh, most of the rest of the month, starting next week. I'll be house sitting again for four weeks. So I might miss it. So I'm super sad. And that happened last year too. People often go on vacation uh, in the fall and I am taking care of their pets. And I miss my own yards. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.